Hi, Drama Llamas. Today we're going to be talking about Stanislavski's system. This is a part of the new series of acting and focusing on different types of acting and acting like systems that you can use as a performer. This is all just some basic information so that you as a performer can decide what things you like and dislike and what works for you to help you become a better performer. This is part of my Stanislavski system and we're going to be doing this is our part one of the system kind of briefly explaining parts of it. This is an information type of thing. There is lots of great places where you can put this into action uh, but really I'm talking about some basic things in our part one. Let's get started shall we? All right so first you gotta know about the man. Born in Moscow in 1863, Konstantin Stanislavski had a more profound effect on the process of acting than did anyone else in the 20th century. At age 14, Stanislavski joined a theatrical group organized by his family and soon became its central figure. Throughout the late 1800s, he improved as an actor and began to produce and direct plays. He asserted that the theater could not be meaningful unless it moved beyond the external representation that acting had primarily been. Over 40 years, he created an, an approach that brought to the forefront the physiological and emotional aspects of acting. Stanislavski's system held that an actor's main responsibility was to be believable, as well as understood. Merely being recognized and heard was insufficient. To reach this believable truth, after years of research with actors at the Moscow Art Theater, Stanislavski began employing new and original methods, such as emotional memory. He felt, at that time, that to work on a particular emotion in a role that involved fear, the actor might remember something that frightened him from his own life. So a lot of this information I am taking from the Simplified Guide to Stanislavski's Teachings, the Stanislavski System, the Professional Training of an Actor by Sonia Moore. Now please note that Stanislavski was Russian and he did come to America before he died, but he had to per t like give this knowledge of his system through a translator and not from its original language so there are a lot of different people who say Stanislavski is this or that or who have taken some of Stanislavski's ideas and then turned them into slightly something different um so if you're more interested in that you can we I will give a video later in this series talking about the schools that came out of the basic Stanislavski system later. All right, well, let's talk a little more about his system. First, the method of physical actions. He said, the first fact is that the element of the human soul and the particulars of a human body are indivisible. The thesis is that human psychological lives, moods, desires, feelings, intentions, and ambitions is expressed through simple actions from the body. Bodies express what we are thinking and experiencing before we are even aware of it. So this basic idea is that, you know, our physical body helps us show and can even like show what we're feeling before we even know it. Psychophysical. Instead of forcing an emotion before going on stage, the actor fulfills a simple, concrete, purposeful, physical action which stirs the psychological side of the psychophysical act, thus achieving psychophysical involvement. Actions must be carefully selected on the basis of the play's circumstances. The build of the character's logical and physical action is simultaneously the build of the character's logical constructiveness of emotions. Actors' bodies must speak we ha when we have no words, projecting in silence the inner monologue and other mental processes and creating an uninterpreted flow of life on stage. 
Words alone cannot project everything. No tool in relationships are expressed by gestures, poses, glances, and silence. Here, Stanislavski is basically saying that you can physically become a character, you know, you physically show those emotions and stuff and the desires through the physical action and that you don't, um, that to get the character on stage, you can perform some physical actions off stage to kind of get you in the go, in the mood of this character before you go on stage. Moving on to the elements of actions. The goal is to carry out truthful, logical, concrete action. Therefore, the turning on of an actor's subconscious. So, Stanislavski, yes, he's, we talked about physical then, but, you know, his big thing is that you're not just surface level. You have a subconscious, subtext, and things like that that you, as an actor, are trying to perform. One big, giant thing that Stanislavski came up with was the magic if. An actor can believe in the possibilities of events. Try answering questions like, what would I do if I were? The magic if transforms the character's aims into the actor's goals. You're taking like you as a logical human being. If I were in this situation, what would I do to help you? Understand what your character is doing and act like how your character could possibly act. The magic if carries you to the imaginary circumstances. You are not foreign yourself to believe that you're such a person. Create the problem for yourself instead. Instead of it being a foreign problem of some other random person, you create that problem as if you were dealing with it. The magic if. Another great, big, important part of Stanislavski is given circumstances. This includes, obviously, the plot, the settings, the condition of life for your character, the director's interpretation, all the technical elements like props, lights, sets, costume, etc. Characters are subject to extreme influence of their environment, so it's important to know or to figure out what is going on in their environment. Where do they fit in their society? Characters are built on things in what things in the given circumstances. What we get from the play. And then also filling in what isn't being said. You as a performer should know so much about your character so that you can play the magic if very easily. Another group great important thing that Stanislavski said was that an actor needed to have a great imagination and that imaginations must be cultivated and developed must be alter and rich and active you must be able to think on any theme as a performer and you should use your surroundings by observing others and their behaviors to try and understand different mentalities Notice what's around you. Be able to compare and contrast and to dream. Be able to complete a character's biography in his mind from beginning to end. This kind of goes back a little bit to the given circumstances. You need to, knowing all helps you shape their behavior. If you don't do this, your performance will be incomplete. Your imagination helps you with line interpretation and giving subtext. The best performers have the best imagination. You can imagine so much and you can come up with lots of great things for your character. Concentration of attention. An actor must concentrate their attention on stage objects sufficiently attractive to the offset and distracting factors beyond the stage. Fully concentrated attention depends on the through execution of physical action. Basically, what they're saying is that you need to know how to give your full concentration on stage to what is important to the stage, the story, the character, the play, etc. We, as a society now, tend to have really small attention spans, and we have to work on that. But there's also this great idea of knowing the circle of attention. 
sometimes you could have your concentration on something small, medium, or large. So let me kind of get walk you through that. To facilitate concentration of attention on the equation of physical action, Stanislavski introduced what he called the circles of attention. First is small. So that would be things right next to you. So if you're sitting on a chair next to a table on stage, it would be you and the chair and what's on that little table. Then you can expand it wider to maybe another piece of furniture, maybe another character, and maybe the large circle of attention is the whole stage. Knowing your circle your circle of attention really helps you understand like what is your character really paying attention to. Next is truth and belief. Truth on stage is different than truth in life. Plays are all invention. Remember that. An actor who believes that he is really a character is emotionally ill. So I want to say that um, people think that Stanislavski um, invented what is known as method acting. If you are not a... If you're emotionally not able to separate yourself from what is real and what isn't method acting is can be very dangerous so you should never go in thinking like i am this character you should know that there is a difference between you and the character and that you should be able to drop your character and be you when you're done with a play or rehearsal belief means that an actor treats things and persons as if they were what he wants the audience to believe they are. Belief also that, you know, when you're on stage, you know that not all the set is real and not all the props are real, but you have to make the audience believe that it is. Carrying out an action uses logical consequence justifies everything with the magic if. Think of given circumstances equals no overacting and truthful. You know, Stanislavski didn't like the overacting melodrama style of acting that had come before him. And when he came up with the system, the idea is that it is very truthful, meaning it comes from a real place of emotions, not necessarily you becoming the character 100% and not being able to differentiate you in the other, in the character, but to give you the idea that if I use this magic if, I could kind of give myself a better understanding and play this character so that people would think it's truthful and real. Communion. Be in communion with your acting partner or partners. Actor's behavior as a character is related to that of the people around him. So each character, and just think about this in real life too, you act differently with different people. The way you act with your grandmother is different from the way you act with your significant other. The way you act with your teacher is different than your best friend. Your behavior is related to the people around you. The way you interact with your worst enemy and your love interest are two different things. To be in communion with another person on stage means being aware of their presence, making sure that they hear and understand you, and making sure that you hear and understand them. On stage, it is super important that you look like you're listening and you're understanding and you actually hear them. Of course, your lines are important, but you can't be thinking, oh, what is my next line? What is my next line? Because you're not going to hear what they're saying that triggers your line and triggers you with the right emotion or mood or physical action that comes with hearing what they're saying. And you must absorb what they say and Do as if, and do everything as if it is the first time. Remember that the, yes, you've done a million hours of rehearsals, but the audience should be thinking that you're doing these actions physically, vocally, emotionally, on stage for the first time. Next, we have tempo and rhythm. Tempo and rhythm is an important condition of concreteness and truthfulness in the execution of physical action. Tempo and rhythm must correspond to the given circumstances. Rhythm changes the objects for a struggle change and different means are used in the struggle. There is an individual right rhythm to every person 
an actor must find it in the character they portray. So, think if you think about it music with music, you know, certain songs have different tempos and rhythms, and if someone's trying to play that song and they're doing a different rhythm, it doesn't fit. So you, as a performer, need to find what sort of rhythm your character has. And here's the big one we're going to wrap up talking when our part one about is emotional memory. Some people get this confused with um, method acting like I discussed earlier. It's not the same. So, emotional memory. An experience of the actor on stage is different from the experience in life. Not the same as 100% real. What you're doing on stage is not real. It's going to feel like the audience should make feel like it's real, but it's not real. Every adult has experienced most emotions. Maybe not in the same way as your character, but in some way or form. Now, this is harder when you are younger, and some of you are younger than 18 or 20 or 30 or whatever that are listening, but you have experienced a lot of emotions. They will not be 100% replicas of your character, and that's okay. Take a little, take a like experience to help you recall the same alike emotions. Emotions. So, now say if on stage, your character's grandfather, they just find out that their grandfather they love just died. Now, if your grandfather hasn't died, you doesn't mean you can't pull from an emotion like that feeling. So you can identify the emotion that your character should be feeling. So let's say, you know, a great sense of loss, um, sorrow, things like that. That's the emotion I'm going for. Well, I could pull from, I ha- maybe I haven't had my grand- grandpa die, but maybe I have had my you know, one of my, my cat, my pet, my dog died. I felt those types of emotions a lot, lot less traumatic than, say, your grandfather dying that you love. Um, but I can use the like experience to pull and help me understand the emotions. You don't have to live the same thing. You can always pull away. In emotional memory, you should be able to pull away. You are not going to get stuck. You should not get stuck in the emotion so much that you as a person couldn't drop it and move away from the scene. Emotional memory can be very helpful when you are trying to portray an emotion that is hard for you to just like pop, like imagine quickly. So, emotional memory can be very helpful. Well, guys, that's it for part one of Stanislavski's system. I will soon be editing more, and you just wait and see for part two, three, four, or however many I do. All right, drama mamas, llamas, drama llamas, I'll see you later. Okay, bye.